case of the marriage of a minor Muslim girl reaches Supreme Court. Punjab and Haryana High Court held the minor girl's marriage as valid. Now NCPCR has challenged the decision in the Supreme Court. Indian National Congress Party gets new president. Malikarjun Kharge became the 65th national president of the Congress. So far, the president has been elected six times through voting. After Cheetahs, God reinstatement exercise started. Six Indian gods can be sent to Sri Lanka. Gods became extinct due to animal disease. One Nation, One Fertilizer scheme launched. It aims to bring various fertilizer companies under one brand. 600 Samriddhi Kendras to be opened under the scheme. And Global Hunger Index report released. India slips by six positions due to grave situation of hunger in the country. Recently, the Supreme Court has ordered an inquiry against a decision of the Punjab and Haryana High Court by issuing a notice. This decision is related to the marriage of a Muslim girl. Actually, a 16-year-old Muslim girl married a man of her choice against the wishes of her family in June 2022. Later, the girl filed a petition in the High Court seeking protection. The High Court recognized the marriage as valid, citing Sharia law and ordered the police to provide security to the girl. In view of this decision of the Punjab and Haryana High Court, the family members of the girl approached the NCPCR, that is, National Commission for Protection of Child Rights. The NCPCR challenged the High Court's decision in the Supreme Court citing violation of the Prevention of Child Marriage Act. Solicitor General Tushar Mehta, appearing for the Commission, argued that this is a serious issue and it should be banned. He also argued that the marriage of a minor girl is against the Prevention of Child Marriage Act. Hence. Holding this marriage as valid is illegal and unconstitutional. Basically, Sharia law considers the marriage of a girl of 16 years to be valid. Sharia law considers the onset of menstruation in girls as adulthood. Girls usually start menstruating at 12 to 15 years of age. Therefore, Sharia law treats a girl of 16 years old as an adult. On the other hand, under the Prevention of Child Marriage Act, the government has fixed the age of marriage at 18 years for girls and 21 years for boys. Therefore, under this law, the marriage of such nature is illegal. Notably, NCPCR was established in 2007 under the Commission for Protection of Child Rights Act. The Commission defines a child as a person falling in the age group of 0 to 18 years. Recently, the election for the post of the President of the Indian National Congress Party was held. Malikarjun Kharge won the election by defeating Shashi Tharoor. This is the sixth time in the 137-year-old history of the Congress that elections have been held for the post of Congress President. The last election for the post of the Congress President was held in 1998. Sonia Gandhi had won this election. Sonia Gandhi holds the record of being the Congress President for the longest time. According to Article 18 of the Constitution of the Congress Party, the Congress President is elected by the representatives of the Indian National Congress in various state committees of the party. Significantly, the Indian National Congress was established in 1885. The idea of founding the Indian National Congress was propounded by Alan Octavian Hume. Its first session was held on 28th December 1885 at Gokul Das Tejpal Sanskrit College located in Gwalia Tank, Bombay. The first president of the Indian National Congress was Ramesh Chandra Banerjee. Notably, the first election of the Congress president was held in 1939. During this period, Subhash Chandra Bose had resigned from the post of president due to a dispute with Gandhiji on the question of the formation of the executive in the Tripuri session. After S.C. Bose's resignation, Dr. Rajendra Prasad was made the Congress president. It is also known as the Tripuri Crisis. Furthermore, the election of the Congress President for the first time in independent India was held in 1950. In this election, Purushottam Das Tandon and Acharya Kriplani were competing for the post of Congress President and Purushottam Das Tandon was elected the President of Congress after the election. 
According to the official website of G20, India will assume the presidency of the G20 for the first time in December 2022. India will be the president of the G20 till November 2023. India has planned to brand its image in front of the major countries of the world during this period. For this purpose, more than 200 G20 meetings will be held at 56 locations within India. The central government is contemplating to host five major meetings in select cities. These cities have been mainly selected on the basis of the famous monuments and UNESCO World Heritage Sites. The meeting sites include the Taj Mahal and Agra Fort of Agra, the Hindu and Jain temples of Khajuraho, the Konark Sun Temple of Puri, and Hampi of Karnataka. Out of the five meetings, Agra will host two meetings. These cities have been selected to focus on the culture track of India as they are commonly known as the cities that promote the tourism sector of India. Significantly, the construction of the Taj Mahal was started in 1632. Indian and Islamic architecture has been used in its construction. It was included in the UNESCO World Heritage List in 1983. Similarly, Agra Fort was included in the list in 1984. It was built by the Mughal Emperor Akbar between 1565 and 1573 AD. This fort has been built with red sandstone. Furthermore, Khajuraho is famous for its beautiful temples. These temples were built by the Chandela rulers between 900 AD and 1130 AD. The first mention of Khajuraho and its temples is found in the books of Al-Biruni and Ibn Battuta. The carvings of these temples are mainly based on Hindu deities and mythology. Sensual expressions are very common in Khajuraho temples. In addition, Hampi is in Vijayanagar district of Karnataka. It was the capital of Vijayanagara Empire of medieval India during the 14th century. It was established in 1336 by Harihara and Bukka. It was included in the UNESCO World Heritage List in the year 1986. It is also the world's largest open-air museum. Konark Sun Temple is located in Puri, Orisha. It was built by the king Narsimhadeva I. In the 13th century, this temple is built in the shape of a huge chariot. The chariot's 24 wheels are equipped with symbolic structures and six horses are pulling it. This temple is dedicated to the sun god. Recently, Digital Banking Unit or DBU was started in 75 districts of India. Currently, it has been started as a pilot project. It will be expanded in the future. It aims to provide banking services to the poor citizens of India. It also aims to financially empower the poor citizens of India by including them under the measure of financial inclusion. The announcement to start DBU was made in this year's budget. DBU is a specialized banking system. It will be set up as the minimum digital infrastructure for providing existing financial products and services in digital form at any point of time in self-service mode. It has been introduced for providing maximum banking services with the minimum digital infrastructure. It is based on the government's door to poor concept. Under this, Customers will be able to open their accounts through eKYC and video KYC. It will also facilitate customers to deposit and withdraw money 24 into 7. Apart from this, customers will also be provided facility for fast tag with fixed deposit, credit and debit cards. In it, retail traders with MSMEs will get the facility of small loans. Commercial banks, other than regional rural banks, payments banks and local area banks, permitted to open DPUs. Recently, the meeting of the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs was held under the chairmanship of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. During the meeting, approval was accorded to increase the MSP of all mandatory rabi crops for the marketing season 2023-24. In total, the MSP of 6 Rabi crops that is wheat, barley, gram, lentils, rapeseed and mustard and safflower has been increased. The MSP of these crops has increased from 2.01% to 9.09%. The MSP of the lentil has been increased significantly by Rs 500 per quintal, followed by rapeseed and mustard at Rs 400 per quintal. Rupees 209 in safflower and rupees 105 per quintal in gram. In addition, there has been an increase of 100 rupees per quintal in barley and 110 rupees per quintal in wheat. While the MSP of wheat was earlier rupees 2015 per quintal, it has increased by rupees 110 to 
225 rupees per quintal, according to the fourth advance estimate released by the Ministry of Agriculture. The production of wheat during 2021-22 is estimated to be 106.84 million tonnes, which is lower than the estimated target of 110 million tonnes for the year and the actual production of 109.59 million tonnes recorded in 2020-21, where there has been a decline in the production of wheat during 2021-22. There has also been a sharp decline in the procurement of wheat by the central government. Actually, MSP is the minimum price at which the government purchases food grains from farmers. The value of MSP is fixed up to one and a half times or more than the cost of production of food grains. A provision of one and a half times hike in MSP was made in the budget 2018-19. Notably, the MSP is announced before the sowing of the crop. The central government announces MSP on a total of 23 crops in Kharif and Rabi seasons. Recently, a survey has been done by Bank of America. According to the survey, there is a possibility of a big rally in the market in 2023. It is indicated by rising investor expectation from the change in US monetary policy. The survey also mentions that currently, the market is in a state of capitulation. Bank of America has stated that the liquidity level in the stock market has reached its all-time high. It is the highest ever since April 2001 at 6.3%. Thus, monetary and credit concerns have pushed market stability risk to an all-time high. Notably, capitulation refers to an event in the financial market in which investors liquidate their positions during a fall in the stock price due to fear of large losses. This fear or panic selling can be due to the spread of negative news, negative global situations or disasters, etc. Hence, when a stock or index starts falling heavily, a sale due to panic is defined as capitulation. Such a scenario was witnessed during the COVID-19 pandemic. Significantly, Nifty and Sensex saw a huge decline in only 13 trading sessions in India during the COVID-19 pandemic. Capitulation is considered a weakness in the stock market. However, not all weakness or panic in the market leads to selling or capitulation. It also serves to provide insights into an overall market sentiment and triggers for the downtrend. After the reduction of capitulation, there is a possibility of purchases in the stock market. And when capitulation ends, the market booms. After the reinstatement of cheetahs in India, the Sri Lankan government has started an exercise to reinstate the gourd species. In this regard, the Sri Lankan government has sent a proposal to India in August 2022 Sri Lanka has requested India to export six gourd or Indian bison. The suggestion of translocating gourds was made by Sri Lankan conservationist Rohan Petia Gorda. This proposal has been sent by the Ministry of External Affairs to the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change and the Ministry's approval is awaited. According to NTCA, that is, National Tiger Conservation Authority, this proposal is being studied that whether the conditions of Sri Lanka are favourable for the species to live and whether the species is suited to live there for a long time or not. However, it may take a few months to evaluate these angles. Experts are of the view that if India gives its consent to Sri Lanka's proposal, then it will be the first agreement between India and Sri Lanka in the global trend of wildlife diplomacy. It is worth noting that Cambodia has also sent a similar proposal to India regarding the translocation of tiger. Notably, the gourd or bison is a large, black-haired bovine animal found in South and Southeast Asia. At present, India has the highest number of gourds in the world. Gourd is the largest of the wild cattle. It is known by different local names like Gauri Gai, Boda, Gauli, etc. in different regions of India. In Sri Lanka, it is called Gavara in the Sinhala language. God was present in large numbers in Sri Lanka until the 17th century, but later became extinct due to animal disease. God is included in Schedule First of the Indian Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. It is also listed in the vulnerable category of the IUCN Red List. The number of gods in the world is between 13,000 and 30,000. Out of these, about 85% of gods are found in India. A unique model is being implemented by the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Under this model, the habitats of snow leopards will be conserved so that the tourists can get an opportunity to see them. The model is unique as it links snow leopard tourism with habitat conservation. 
under the model not only will the leopards be protected but also the local people will get alternative livelihood opportunities the model is being implemented in collaboration with UNDP that is the United Nations Development Program actually local communities in Ladakh have been included in the model under the secure himalaya project it aims to promote community based tourism it also aims to encourage traditional natural farming in farms it is expected to prevent incidents of human wildlife conflict significantly local communities in ladakh have coexisted with snow leopards for centuries but the habitat of snow leopards has decreased due to climate change and the increasing human population it is noteworthy that community based tourism is a type of sustainable tourism in this tourism local people invite travelers to visit or stay in their communities for providing them with an authentic experience of the local culture and traditions these communities are often rural economically struggling or living below the poverty line the most important thing about this tourism is that the economic benefits directly go to the local families notably the secure himalaya project was started by the central government in 2017 it was implemented in uttarakhand himachal pradesh jammu and kashmir sikkim in collaboration with undp the timeline of this project is 6 years it covers the area from gangotri national park in uttarakhand to askot sanctuary it aims to conserve the biodiversity and snow leopards in the high himalayan regions the scientific name of the snow leopard is panthera uncia it is listed on the iucn red list it is also listed in the schedule 1 of the wildlife protection act of india 1972 it is known as the apex predator in the food chain hence it is considered as an indicator of health of mountain ecosystem recently isro chairman s somnath has informed that isro is developing an nglv that is next gen launch vehicle according to him NGLV will replace PSLV after it is developed. He shared this information while speaking at an engineers conclave held in Thiruvananthapuram. Actually, PSLV is the launch vehicle of the 90s which will retire in near future. Keeping this in mind, NGLV is being developed by ISRO. However, he also stated that PSLV will continue to be operated as long as it is in the commercial demand. According to the ISRO chairman, NGLV will be a three-stage reusable launch vehicle. It will have a payload capacity of about 10 tons for GTO that is geostationary transfer orbit. At the same time, the payload capacity for LEO that is low earth orbit will be twice that of GTO. It will have the facility of semi cryogenic propulsion for the booster stages. In addition, refined kerosene with liquid oxygen will be used as fuel in NGLV. In short, NGLV will be a three-stage launch vehicle which will operate on liquid fuel. On the other hand, PSLV, that is Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, is India's third generation launch vehicle. Its first successful launch was done in October 1994. It is a four-stage launch vehicle. It can launch more than one satellite. It also has the multi-chamber capability. Significantly, it is the first Indian launch vehicle to be equipped with liquid stages. It is called the workhorse of ISRO. because of its quality and work apart from PSLV ISRO's other launch vehicle is GSLV that is geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle it is a three stage launch vehicle with strap on motors GSLV is a rocket which can place a 250 kg satellite in geostationary orbit apart from this ISRO also has other launch vehicles like SSLV recently PM Kisan Samman conference 2022 was organized in ICAR that is Indian Agricultural Research Institute during the program PM BJP that is Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Jan Urvarak Pariyojana that is One Nation One Fertilizer Scheme was launched by the Prime Minister along with this an e-magazine on fertilizers titled Indian Edge and 600 Pradhan Mantri Samruddhi Kendras were also inaugurated PM BJP aims to bring various fertilizer companies under one brand Actually these companies used to pay high commissions for selling their fertilizers due to being different brands earlier as a result consumer had to pay high prices for fertilizers now after this scheme the competition among the fertilizer companies will end as they will become one brand this move will make it easier to ensure an adequate supply of fertilizer at affordable prices across india under this scheme all fertilizer companies state business entities and fertilizer marketing entities will have to use the same brand bharat 
for fertilizers and the PM BJP logo. The brand name Bharat and the PM BJP logo will cover the front two third portion of the fertilizer packet, while the companies that manufacture it will be free to put their name, logo, and other information on the remaining one third portion. Notably, Pradhan Mantri Samruddhi Kendras are the centers where farmers can not only buy fertilizers and seeds but also get soil tests done. The farmers can also get useful information about agricultural techniques at the centers. These centers will also supply agricultural inputs like agricultural equipment. Under the scheme, about 3.25 lakh fertilizers retail outlets across India will be converted into Pradhan Mantri Samruddhi Kendras. Recently, the 15th report of the Global Hunger Index was published. According to the data, India has now slipped 6 places to 107th position out of 121 countries. Whereas India was ranked 101st among 116 countries in 2021. According to the report, India's position is the worst among the South Asian countries except Afghanistan. Afghanistan has been ranked 109 in this list. No separate rank has been assigned to the 17 countries with a score of less than 5 included in the Global Hunger Index this year. Rather, these countries have been jointly given the ranks 1 to 17 as there is a slight difference in their scores. European countries including Croatia, Estonia and Montenegro were among the top rankers in the list. China, the most populous country in the world, is among the countries which have topped the list, while Yemen has secured the last position in the list. At the same time, Pakistan has been ranked 99th, Sri Lanka 64th, Bangladesh 84th, Nepal 81st and Myanmar 71st. The Global Hunger Index is jointly prepared by Concern Worldwide and World Hunger Life. This index is a major tool to measure and track the status of hunger in countries at the global level. The index is prepared on the basis of four indicators. These four indicators are undernourishment, child wasting, child stunting and child mortality. On the basis of these indicators, countries are given a score between 1 to 200. Countries are ranked on the basis of marks obtained. The index has placed India in a critical state of hunger with a score of 29.1. Recently, Global Multidimensional Poverty Index has been released. It has been jointly released by UNDP, that is the United Nations Development Programme, and OPHI, that is Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative. According to the index, there has been a big decline in the number of poor people in India in the last 15 years between 2005 to 2006 and 2019 to 2021. About 415 million people have come out of poverty in India. During this period, poverty in India has reduced from 55% to about 16%. This poverty reduction has been described by the United Nations as a historic change. However, despite the significant reduction, the poverty figures in India is still very high. In 2020, about 228.9 million poor people lived in India, which is the highest in the world. Significantly, 111 countries have been included in this index. The data presented in the index reveals that 1.2 billion people in the world live in acute poverty. Out of these people, about half, that is, 593 million are children below the age of 18 years. India had about 97 million poor children in 2019-21, to which is the highest in the world. According to the index, Sub-Saharan Africa is the poorest region in the world with about 579 million poor people. It is followed by South Asia, where about 385 million people are poor. India is the only country in South Asia where female-headed households are poorer than male-headed households. The index has also revealed that the COVID-19 pandemic has delayed the global progress on poverty reduction by about 3 to 10 years. Significantly, GMPI, that is Global Multidimensional Poverty Index, is a major international resource that measures multidimensional poverty in more than 100 developing countries. It was first developed in 2010 by the Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative and the United Nations Development Programme. The Multidimensional Poverty Index is based on the principle that poverty is not one-dimensional, but multidimensional. It monitors deprivation in 10 indicators related to health, education and standard of living. It covers both the incidence and intensity of poverty. Let us now look at the five questions based on today's bulletin. Questions for this series are, first question is, consider the following statements with reference to the Indian National Congress. 
वन द फर्स्ट इलेक्शन फॉर द पोस्ट ऑफ कांग्रेस प्रेजिडेंट वॉज हेल्ड इन नाइनटीन थर्टी नाइन टू द एनुअल सेशन ऑफ द कांग्रेस वॉज हेल्ड एट हरिपुरा इन नाइनटीन थर्टी नाइन थ्री द इलेक्शन ऑफ द कांग्रेस प्रेजिडेंट फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम इन इंडिपेंडेंट इंडिया वॉज हेल्ड इन नाइनटीन फिफ्टी फोर पुरुषोत्तम दास टंडन वॉज द फर्स्ट इलेक्टेड कांग्रेस प्रेजिडेंट इन इंडिपेंडेंट इंडिया विच ऑफ द अब स्टेटमेंट ऑफ स्टेटमेंट इज और आर करेक्ट वन एंड थ्री ओनली टू थ्री एंड फोर ओनली वन थ्री एंड फोर ओनली और ऑल ऑफ द अब नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट वन द डिजिटल बैंकिंग यूनिट इज बेस्ड ऑन द गवर्नमेंट डोर टू पुअर कॉन्सेप्ट टू डिजिटल बैंकिंग यूनिट एम्स टू प्रोवाइड बैंकिंग सर्विसेस टू द पुअर सिटीजन ऑफ इंडिया थ्री ऑल बैंक विद डिजिटल बैंकिंग एक्सपीरियंस आर परमिटेड टू ओपन डिजिटल बैंकिंग यूनिट विच ऑफ द अब स्टेटमेंट ऑफ स्टेटमेंट इज और आर करेक्ट वन ओनली टू ओनली वन एंड टू ओनली और टू एंड थ्री ओनली नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट वन द ताज महल वॉज इंक्लूडेड इन द यूनेस्को वर्ल्ड हेरिटेज लिस्ट इन नाइनटीन एटी थ्री टू द खजुराहो टेम्पल्स वर बिल्ट बाय द चंडेला रूलर्स थ्री हम्पी इज द वर्ल्ड लार्जेस्ट ओपन एयर म्यूजियम विच ऑफ द अब स्टेटमेंट ऑफ स्टेटमेंट इज और आर इन करेक्ट वन ओनली थ्री ओनली वन एंड थ्री ओनली और नन ऑफ द अब नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट विद रेफरेंस टू द ग्लोबल मल्टी डायमेंशनल पॉवर्टी इंडेक्स वन According to the index poverty in India has declined from 55% to 16% level. 2 111 countries have been included in this index. 3 it was developed by the Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative and the United Nations Development Program. Which of the above statement or statements is or are correct? 1 and 2 only, 1 and 3 only, all of the above or none of the above last question is consider the following statements one minimum support price is the minimum price at which everyone is bound to buy food grains from farmers two a provision of one and a half times increase in minimum support price was made in the budget 2018-19 Three, the minimum support price is announced one month after the sowing of the crop. Which of the above statement or statements is or are correct? One only, two only, one and two only, or one and three only? Recently, British Prime Minister Liz Truss has resigned. This is the shortest tenure of a prime minister in Britain. She remained in the prime minister's post for only 45 days. She assumed this position on 6 September 2022. In fact, during her campaign, Liz Truss made promises to bring the economy back on track. Taking the responsibility of not being able to fulfill them, she has resigned from her post. Recently, the Indian Army celebrated the Diamond Jubilee of the Vellore War. It is celebrated to commemorate the valor and sacrifice of the Indian Army during China's invasion in 1962. In this war, the Indian soldiers were very few in number and they were highly short on guns and bullets. Without any resources, the Indian soldiers displayed their valor and adopted the policy of continuing the war till the last soldier and the last bullet. Dr Dilip Mahalnobis passed away recently. He was a pediatrician and is known as the father of ORS that is oral rehydration solution. He is credited with developing life saving solutions and popularizing oral rehydration therapy during the Bangladesh war. Notably ORS is a combination of water, glucose and salt which is a simple and economical way to deal with dehydration. Prime Minister Narendra Modi distributed Ayushman cards to the beneficiaries of PMJYMA that is Pradhan Mantri Jan Aarogya Yojana Ma Amrutam in Gujarat. Pradhan Mantri Jan Aarogya Yojana was integrated with Gujarat's Mukhya Mantri Amrutam and Mukhya Mantri Amrutam Vatsalya Health Schemes in 2019. The scheme formed after this integration is called Pradhan Mantri Jan Aarogya Yojana Ma Amrutam. 
Recently, the first Khelo India Women's Judo National League was organized in New Delhi. It was organized by the Judo Federation of India and the Department of Sports, Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports. Players like Tulika Man and Linthoi Chanambam also participated in the league. Tulika Man won silver for India in the Commonwealth Games 2022. And Linthoi Chanambam won the gold medal in the Cadet World Championships. She is the first Indian player to win a gold medal in the Cadet World Championships. Recently, Defence Expo 2022 was inaugurated in Gandhinagar, the capital of Gujarat. This expo will be held till October 22. The Defence Expo's theme is Path to Pride. It is a major defence exhibition. Significantly, it is the largest ever indigenous arms exhibition in India. Recently, Hyderabad won the World Green City Award 2022. It is the only city in India to have won the Green City Award. Hyderabad has also won an award in the category of Living Green for Economic Recovery and Inclusive Growth. It is noteworthy that the International Association of Horticulture Producers Ceremony was held in Jeju, South Korea on 14th October 2022. And these awards were announced during this ceremony. The Indian Meteorological Department has issued a cyclone warning in Odisha. According to the department, a low-pressure area is forming over the southeast bay of Bengal, which is likely to transform into a cyclone. If it transforms into a cyclone, then it will be called Sitang or Sitrang, as suggested by Thailand. It will be the second cyclone of 2022 in the Bay of Bengal after Asani. Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched a global campaign Mission Life. The Prime Minister has started this mission from Kevadia, Gujarat. Mission Life is a major campaign for environmental protection. Under this mission, environmental protection-related awareness will be provided in countries around the world. About 1 crore people have been estimated to participate in this mission. Under this mission, the goal of the climate change and environmental protection has been set. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres was present on the occasion of the global launch of Mission Life. India is planning to bring a new national tourism policy. Under this policy, cities like Prayagra, Chitrakoot and Gwalior identified in 15 states across India will be promoted as tourist areas. The program will focus on reviving destination-based tourism from a theme-based tourism circuit. It is also an initiative under the first phase of Swadesh Darshan 2 to be kicked off in January. Under Swadesh Darshan 2, two destinations in each state of India have been identified. These 15 states include states like Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh and Maharashtra.